Hello friends, welcome to Reach Goals. Today we are going to talk about load balancers, its purposes and also we are going to talk about some real time production issues which are faced during the uh, setup of the load balancer or during the operations. Right. So, so what is load balancer? Let us talk with some simple analogy. Right. So, you have seen the traffic across streets and there is a traffic cop sitting over there and he distributes the traffic in such a way that you know travel is seamless right so similarly if you look at the load balancers uh, it sits it be, sits in between the client and the server form where you get n number of requests from the client and the traffic is shifted or traffic is distributed seamlessly to the back end servers right so that is the purpose of a load balancer so, if you look into this picture, it clearly tells what the load balancer is, right? So, if you have a different application clients, all these clients connect to the load balancer and load balancer in, in turn shifts the traffic to different servers across the backend, right? So, this is something called uh, shifting the traffic within your uh, uh, data center or within your premises, right? So, you have the application client uh, which are coming into the load balancer and all the traffic is routed to different servers. And the other way is you have application clients which are geographically you can distribute the traffic right. You have a load balancer which is sitting somewhere in the internet and it distributes the traffic across the globe. Let us say you might be having a server at uh, locations like Australia or you may be having in North America or in somewhere in Singapore etc. Right? So all the traffic gets diverted to different geographical locations. This is called a geographic load balancing. Now let us talk about what are the types of load balancer. There are primarily two types of load balancers. One is hardware based and other one is software based. So what is hardware based? Hardware based is nothing but something similar to this right. So the load balance software is embedded within the hardware right. Load balancer software is uh, embedded in the hardware and it is sold as a hardware right. So now if you look at the third picture you can clearly understand it is something like a symbol something like a computer right. You have uh, motherboard, CPUs, RAM etc. But all the software which has been embedded into that and it is boxed and it is sold to the different customers right. So that is called hardware lo hardware based load balancers right. So what is a software based load balancers? A software board based load balancer is nothing but you have the software or the load balancer software what you do is you go and install in the commodity hardware right or you go and install into the EC2 instance and it can scale based on uh, how, however you want to scale right. So that is an advantage of uh, software based load balancers right and you can you can configure in such a way that you know based on your traffic you can keep on adding the uh, adding the number of software based uh, sorry number of EC2, EC2 instance so that the software based load balancer get added to the system. Right. This is something what they do in Amazon uh, Amazon Web Service with Elastic Cloud. Right. And for the folks who are not familiar how this load balancer stands in the data center. So this is a picture of a data center. Now you can see the load balancer over here and the traffic incoming traffic which are coming from the clients hits this load balancer and the load balancer in turn is connected to the different servers right. So that is what we call it as a that is what we already talked about distributing the traffic across the servers in the server form right. And now we will talk about major functions of load balancers. Uh, load balancers has multiple functions and primarily the three things are distributing the client requests. So you have n number of client requests and each client request has to be distributed across different servers. So that is what we called as distributing the client request. And the second thing is ensuring the high availability. This is very important right. So you have you have 1000 requests coming from the client. Right? And you have one load balancer sitting in between and this traffic is uh, diverted to like you know 10 number of servers right. Let us say one server goes down right. So load balancer automatically based on heartbeat mechanism it will identify that one server is one server has gone down it is not in use right. So it will automatically switch all this incoming traffic be between the nine servers right. So that means even though one server goes out of control or one server fails rest of the nine servers are used and it helps the high availability for the system or high availability for the clients right. So the third one is provides flexibility to add or remove servers from the server form. Let us say you have a thousand requests coming to the coming to the load balancer and this requests are distributed across 
10 uh, 10 servers right let's take an example like that right so now you decide now you came to know that one of the server is is not working or one of the server has to be upgraded right the cpu has to be upgraded or hardware has to be upgraded so what do you do in this case what you do is you change the configuration to switch all your traffic between the nine servers and you take the server which has to go for a maintenance you remove it fix it and attach the server to the existing form and reconfigure in such a way the traffic distributes to the uh, 10 different servers so that means you have a mechanism or a flexibility to do a maintenance without impacting the customers so that's what we call it as provides flexibility to add or remove servers from the server form right and now we'll talk about load balancing algorithms there are multiple load balancing algorithms i want to cover only three important things uh, which 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 are really interesting to know about that right so first one is round robin <coughs> what happens over here is requests are distributed sequentially so what does it mean let's say you have thou you have thousand clients and there is one load balancer let's say you have two different servers in the back end right so you want the distribute traffic dis traffic to be distributed in form of a round robin what it happens is load balance what it does is it the first connection make sure the first connects goes to the first server the second will go to the second and third will go to the first and the fourth will go to fourth will go again back to the second one so the sequence keeps on rotating itself right that's what we call it requests are distributed sequentially right so there is a bigger uh, disadvantage over, over 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 the round robin let's talk about that in the future slides right the second one is least connection right so what does this algorithm does is let's say you have two servers in the back end right or three servers in the back end so load balancer algorithm figures out a which server has least number of connection or which which has the least number of cpu or memory usage so based on that it will divert the traffic to the the server which has the least traffic so this is called least connection algorithm so the third one is ip hashing so ip hashing is nothing but uh, the load balancer determines to serve a set of ip as ip addresses from the client right so it uses the client ip address to determine to which it has to serve right let's say you have 1000 requests out of 1000 requests let's say 1 to 500 ranges uh, ranges from a to b uh, ip address right and uh, 500 to 600 ranges from uh, C to D and 600 to 1000 ranges from uh, E to F right so load balancer will determine okay A to B will go to the first server and C to uh, C to D or C to E will go to the next server right so the based on the cli client's IP address the algorithm decides which, from where algorithm de decides to distribute the traffic that's called IP hashing okay this is very important topic and it's uh, it's uh, quite normally it has been asked in the interview right what is session persistence or something it is related to the uh, session stickiness right so if you look into the e-commerce application the session plays a major role in storing the shopping cart right so if, if let's say you have uh, thousand thousand requests or thousand clients connecting to the load balancer right so the, let's say first request comes to the load balancer and uh, <coughs> it goes to your server and sometimes you know it the first request comes with the shopping cart information right and all the shopping cart information has to be stored in the session right so now the now the response is given back to the client right now again the again the request coming from the first request or request coming the first user it load balancer has to make sure it has to go to the same server let's say if it goes to the different server it will not be able to retain the information which has been already stored in the cache right so in this case what happens there is a failure right so the customer who came uh, as a first customer who stored all his information in the first server will not be able to get that information right so that is what we call a session persistence or session stickiness so what actually the load balancer has to be made or it has to be configured in such a way let's say the first request which is coming from the first machine when it hits the load balancer if it goes to first request second time when the same guy comes or the same request or at a different request from the same client comes it has to go to the same server so that is what we call it as a sticky session so this is a very key which is a very important role uh, which is which, which has to be noted when we are configuring the load balancers right when you have a mechanism like something we are storing session in the server you have to make sure the session stickiness is implemented in the load balancers right And other interesting topic is, you know, it's about the real time production issues which are surrounding around the load balances, right? 
So let's say you have, uh, let's say you you defined your system design, etc. Right? You have uh, thousands of customer requests or client requests coming into the load balancer, and you have multiple num multiple number of servers at the back end, right? So let's say you decide you at one point of time, you know, you came to know that you know my server whatever I have configured is enough, and you are not set up to have a to have a multiple load balancers, right? So let's say if single if there is only one load balancer, if it fails at some point of time then whole system goes down right you don't have a mechanism to connect all your clients to the server so it's a single point of failure so when you are when you are not configured a load balancer to have a high availability you will lead into this issue like uh, this issues like single point of failures right that is first one the second thing is we already talked about round robin right so let's say you have multiple servers in the back end and uh, let's say 100 requests are 100 requests are coming from the client to the load balancers and it's all going into the multiple servers in the back end right now as per the round robin what 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 it actually happens is the first request will go into the first server the second will go into the second server second server and third will go into the third server right that's a sequence which happens continuously now let's say in the back end your back end servers not are not efficient or it is not equally distributed let's say one server has a capacity which is very high and the second one which doesn't have a high capacity right so what happens the first server can withstand higher number of requests from the client the second one cannot withstand the same number of requests right it will run out of memory or it will run out of capacity and it will it will very quickly uh, go out it will very quickly start to fail or it will go out of control right so once the second server goes out of control what will happen the distribution will happen between the first and the third right similarly the third server let's say it's it's also doesn't have a good capacity the third can also go out of control or it can fail so now in this case what happens all the requests coming into the load balancer will go into the server number one at one point of time you know even that will go out of capacity and it will fail so this is called uh, this is a this is a typical failure case in round robin algorithm and what it can be done is two ways we can solve it one is we should have all the backend servers which are equally configured so that the distributions are equally equally distributed and the responses is also equal which goes into the the clients right the other one is weighted robin weighted weighted round robin what is weighted round robin out of three servers we can give a weightage like you know you can give a weightage to high weightage to the server which has higher capacity and low weightage to the server which has lower capacity in this case the majority of the requests will go into the high weightage server comparing to the low weightage server so in this case also the traffic can be somewhat managed to distribute equally right and the third one is cache overflow right what is cache overflow right so we talked about session persistence in the earlier slide right so so request coming from the client like you know it goes and stores the uh, shopping cart information in the cache right so you keep on uh, continuing this for a while or for maybe for a day or a day or a two so the cache can get overflowed right the number of information which gets stored in the cache can go out of memory and it can lead into the failures right so this is something related to the configuration and planning the capacity if you're not planning the server or if you're not planning the cache to meet the capacity this can go out of control so that is what we call it as a cache overflow right i think that's that's it i have about the load balancers and thanks for watching if you have any comments you can put in the comment section i am happy to answer that thank you